Welcome back to the Appalachian State Dynasty here in EA College Football. 25 back in Boone, North Carolina. Your Mountaineers are set to take on one of the top teams in Conference USA. So not a rival or not a conference matchup, but it's pretty doggone close. They are taking on the Liberty Flames, who a few years ago were ranked at one point behind the hand of Malik Willis. Now they are 3-1 and one to start the year, 2-0 and oh in their conference play. They've had a pretty good start to their season and they are led by a very talented quarterback maybe the most talented quarterback that we're gonna face all year long outside of Cade Klubnik who we've already taken on so it's gonna be interesting to see how our defense can respond in a game where they gave up 38 points to South Alabama last week in a freshman quarterback we're gonna be let out obviously Caden Robinson 17 catches on the year he has been the leader on offense but Mikel Haywood back starting this week Kanye Roberts had a very good week last week but I just liked the one-two punch that Haywood supplied with Roberts as he's got a couple of good runs to start the day that one's a first down after a nine yard run on the first run now second and ten Aguilar play action under pressure running out of the pocket doesn't get back to the line he is sacked so he's gonna lose seven that's gonna bring up a third and 17 for the Mountaineers Aguilar out of the shotgun takes the snap wants to throw it he's gonna lob it outside and it's just out of the reach of Caden Robinson as we get a look at the impact players Quentin Cooley and the one quarterback we talked about Caden Salter a 90 overall quarterback for the flame here he is gonna be very big if they want to win this game Salter's first pass should have been picked off by Robertson they live to fight another day on third and 12, this time inside, and he looked for the running back Cooley, but that may have been Billy Lucas, unable to connect. So a quick three and out for the Flame on their first drive. Instead, the Mountaineers will go as Aguilar hit and losing the ball. They're going to call it an incomplete pass somehow. Now third and one, it's going to be a run. Mikel Haywood doesn't even get close. Chris Boti. Brings him down in the backfield, and the Flame will get the ball back. Now Billy Lucas running it on the outside, and there is a penalty. And it looks like they're going to call holding on the offense of Liberty. So defense trying to, you know, getting a break here early in this one. That was a good run there by Lucas, and now it's going to be first and 21, and that's going to make it a much easier second and 11 after the nice catch from the tight end. Now Salter under pressure gets it outside and it's caught in a first down Salter with 27 through the air that was julian gray one of their top receivers nice little simple out route Salter's gonna do the fake it's a read option and he's got all kinds of space spinning and he is lit up oh my goodness he spun right into the hands of thomas davis that is a dangerous man to spin into as now they're gonna run it on second and five and he maybe gets a yard so now a third and four Salter has Cooley beside him. It's a delayed handoff. Nowhere to go. And the Flame are going to flame out here on this second drive on their offense. And now on the side of the Mountaineers. And they're going to go for the field goal. It is blocked by the Mountaineers special teams unit. And they didn't even have a chance. Couldn't even get a hand on them off the edge. And the Mountaineers keep it at zero Aguilar gonna throw it outside tough catch by Robinson Caden Robinson impressive impressive senior year so far he is hopefully getting himself a draft spot of some sorts now they're gonna dump it down to Kanye Roberts who races for the first down he is such a good threat through the air he has been our second maybe even third third or second best receiver on the team proving it there a nice spin move off the dump down He's going to get four or six yards, making it a third and manageable here. Third and one. Direct snap to Haywood. Swerving up the middle. First down inside the 20. Mark him at the 13 on second and six. That's going to send Haywood in motion. Now Aguilar is going to go. That's Roberts, actually. Roberts, this time, can't spin his way out of traffic. That is his second grab, but he's going to lose a yard on that one. We're going to head into the second. Tied up 0 0. Now Aguilar, third and six, rolls out. Looking towards the end zone. Can't quite get it. Gonna run for it. And they're gonna give him the first down, making it a second and goal at the five. That was very close to being a fourth and inches. Instead, they're gonna give him the first down. So now they're gonna have a chance here to score in a goal line scenario. They're gonna run it. Roberts gets it down to the goal line. And what do you do here? Do you run it or do you pass it? Aguilar, go, goal line stand, play action, rolls, fires, corner of the end zone. 
caught touchdown. Kanan Hamlet, the sure-handed third-string tight end, finds his way on the field on a play-action bootleg and makes a magnificent grab there for the Mountaineer offense to get on top early. Billy Lucas, a nice four-yard run for the Flame. He's got 13 yards on the ground. Nothing crazy so far. Second and six. Going to be a run this time. Lucas, no, he's going to fake it. Sauter going to toss it outside, and it's caught. Julian Gray, what a grab on the crossing route, and he has a deep inside Mountaineer territory on second and inches now. Big space, and he pitches it for some reason. They still get the first down. Hayden Sauter just had a touchdown, maybe, and he pitched it. So that is a big mistake there for Sauter. He's going to have to get back on the board or get a, a whole lot more yards to get on the board now as they have a third and three after that seven-yard completion now. Sauter out of the shotgun. He's going to have Lucas in a single back set behind him. It's going to be a delayed handoff to Lucas. No one up the middle, so he's got a first down running over a few guys. As he gets it inside the 10, they're going to have it exactly on the 10 on first down. Sauter goes to Lucas, cutting outside, touchdown, and the flame strike back as he says he did that one on your head to this Mountaineer defense. 7-7 seven, seven if they're able to hit the extra point in the flame. Not an easy offense to guard. I'm surprised we held them scoreless this long into the game. But Billy Lucas, he was going to get free eventually. Senior back, he's a veteran. He knows how to read the, read the zone and how to find the hole in the offense. And he does just that by cutting outside and getting that one into the open field. So this one's going to be tied up at 7 now. Michael Hetzel got a lot of space on the return. Racing down the field. Down to the 35 and finally rung down around the 30. And what a return for the slot receiver. He has been so electric for this offense. Now he does it on special teams. Aguilar on second and three. Loses seven or six on the ground. That was Bryson Jennings bringing him down. And the Mountaineers have a third and eight after the good run. A good run back there facing a three and out but Kanye Roberts racing much more than I expected him to get down inside the 10 He's gonna set up a first and goal I thought he was gonna be brought down after a few yards they're gonna go back to him on the ground spinning but he's going backwards he's gonna lose a couple bad decision there Dominic Hill's gonna bring him down in the backfield for the flame and that is now a second and goal at the 11 Aguilar steps up under pressure and he's sacked for the third time today Chris Boatey with his first, his second tackle for loss. So they have a third and goal from the 17. They're going to go to the screen, wide receiver screen, I should say. And that's Christian Horn. He's going to get a few, but nothing really crazy. And they're going to go back. Michael Hughes kicks it up, and it is good. From the far right hash, that's a dangerous spot to be. Not as bad as the left hash, I will add. But still, you never like to be on the far hashes, no matter where you're at on the field. And thankfully... Michael Hughes able to nail that one in the Mountaineers. Julius Canary pumping his fist. They take the lead 10-7, but there's still a lot of time left. Salter going to start their next drive with Lucas, and he's quickly rung down. Jordan Favors brings him down on the safety blitz. Good job there by Favors to get into the backfield now for second and 10. Big pass down the field. Salter finds his man on the post route. And that sets them up right at the midfield line. First and 10, Sauter looks to the sideline, takes the snap. It's going to be a throw or a passing play rolling out. Back across the middle. He's got his man open down to the 30. He has over 100 yards now through the air in this first half. And they are cooking and moving on offense. Sauter, a little bit of pressure initially. Instead, plants, fires, and hits his man on the sideline. What a grab rolling out of bounds. That's going to give them a first and 10 from the 12. Now Sauter to the end zone. Touchdown, and he holds on to it. Big crossing route. A deep one, and that one is caught and secured by Mobley for the touchdown. The flame went down the field in less than a minute. Tyson Mobley finishing the drive. And just like that, they are now up by four. Aguilar going to start the next drive. First and 10 rolling out. Dumps it, and it's picked off. The intended target was Michael Hetzel, but instead he led it too far inside, and that one's intercepted. So the Liberty Flame 
have a chance here to go up, but that one's intercepted. Ethan Johnson racing down the 35 to the 20 down, and he is gone. 67 yard pick six for Ethan Johnson. And you went from, man, we might go down by two scores after that interception by thrown by Joey Aguilar. And now you're up by three as Caden Salter returns the favor with a pick six on the very next play. But he is very angry. He's going to do a nice comeback route to his man Tyson Mobley. Big, big catch there. And they are now inside of Mountaineer, Mountaineer territory less than 15 seconds into the drive. Under a minute now. It's going to be a good slant route. He's got it down around the 33 second and 10. The stadium pulse is getting lower. The flame trying to drive down the field. Got his man. Touchdown behind the secondary. Caden Salter patient in the pocket. And he delivers for another passing touchdown on the day. That is his second so far. And we will head out here. Final drive of the second half or of the second quarter, hopefully. Kanye Roberts starts with a screenplay. 21-17. And Liberty gets the ball first, I believe. This one's lobbed outside and deflected away. Could have been picked off. Dangerous pass. Dominic Hill in coverage there. And now they have a third and 10 from the 48-yard line. 20 seconds and counting. Aguilar takes it. Good protection here initially. He's going to step up, fire it down low. Christian Horn on the drag route gets the first down. So they have it. Not in field goal range yet, but you're close enough. You can maybe make a play now. Joey Aguilar scrambling and stays in the middle of the field. Good decision. He's got it at 54 yards for Michael Hughes. Hasn't hit one this long the entire year. Third and 11 from the 37. Can he do it? 13 mile per hour wins. Hughes up and it is good as he brings this lead down to one as we head out into the second half. The Flame... Up by one, playing good on offense. That time, though, it's knocked out of the hands of Tyson Mobley on the screen. They have a third and nine. Salter looks down the field. He's going to step back. No good pressure on him, but he's still going to not have anyone open, so he decides to run for it, and he will have to punt it away. A quick three and out to start the half for the Flame. It's going to be a run play. No, it's a screen pass. Caden Robinson breaks the first tackle. First down at the 48. For the Mountaineer offense, Aguilar looking to throw again after that first successful one. He's going to fumble it, and it is recovered by the O-lineman. Oh, man, that would have been a huge momentum shift there. But still, a third and 16 is just as difficult as giving the ball up. Final seconds of the play clock. Going to go outside to Eli Wilson. Not even a chance. Maybe back to the marker. Maybe. But it's still going to have to punt it away. So Julius Canary, both teams go three and out to start the second half. This one's play action. Looks to go deep down field. And it's caught on the run. Breaking free down to the 15 at the 11. Mark them at the 12, actually. What a catch and run for Liberty. And they are now in business on second and 20 after a holding call. They're going to make it third and 10. After the 10-yard carry or 10-yard catch there, Salter delayed handoff to the running back. Nowhere to go. Surprising call there as that is a interesting situation to run in. They're going to go for the field goal here on 4th and 14. He got blocked earlier this time, though. It is up, and it is good. And the Mountaineers trail by 4, so we need to make a bit of a comeback here. Aguilar is going to dump it down to his favorite target, Kanye Roberts, racing out of everybody's arms. He's got another first down. He seems to be able to make guys miss at will now. First and 10. Aguilar lobs it. It's dropped by Hetzel. Oh, he had a big gain in his hands, but it's now a second and 10 after the drop. Aguilar steps up, and he's sacked for the seventh time today as he loses three. He had Roberts open in the flats, but he just couldn't get the ball out. Now they're going to go to him on the screen. Roberts racing, cutting inside. First down. Big run from Kanye Roberts after the screenplay blew up. And they have it second and 11. So, you know you converted. You did the hard part now. You just have to keep doing that to go down the field. Aguilar rolling out. No one's open. Last second. Lob to Roberts. Caught. Racing and in inside the five. Wow. Markham at the three. I thought that was maybe going to be, you know, a 10-yard game. Maybe probably an incompletion. But it turns into a first and goal, and it turns into a touchdown. 
Joey Aguilar. What a dart to Michael Hetzel after a beautiful lob to Kanye Roberts. He just put it in over behind the defender and gave Kanye Roberts enough air. He said, go use that athleticism. Go use that speed and catch this one and take it down as far as you can. And Kanye Roberts did just that. And it led to this dagger, or not dagger, this drag route. And a 7 or 27 to 24 lead for the Mountaineers now. They go up by three after originally trailing by four. We're here in the final seconds of the third quarter. Salter is going to hand it off to Billy Lucas. He's got the first down and then some. Good run on third down. He's brought down, but he has 65 yards on the ground on just 13 carries. So not bad for this uh for Liberty's rushing attack. They are set up well here to start the fourth, though. Jordan Favors has a different story. His fifth tackle of the day. And he makes it a second and ten. Sots are gonna fake it this time. Not gonna stay on the ground. He's gonna lob it deep downfield. Picked off. Seth Robertson can't escape the receiver on the return but what a interception that could be the biggest shift of momentum in this game now you're going to see a second and five dalton stroman first down run and he's going to move those chains as you see nate johnson went down off the interception return he's going to be able to come back a little bit later in this one now second and nine good protection kanye roberts gets it breaks a few tackles and he's got a first down again for the Mountaineers, we're under nine minutes almost here in this fourth quarter. It's going to be a wide receiver screen. This time, Christian Horn breaks the first man's tackle. Almost got free, but him and Stroman actually collided with each other. Are they still able to get it inside the 33 now? It's going to be a fake screen. Roberts this time didn't have a lot of space. And he is brought down in the backfield for a loss of one now. Second and 11. Aguilar, all kinds of time, steps up, and he's going to get about seven on the ground. Setting up a third and manageable here on third and four. It's going to be a run. Roberts cuts outside. Good job. Just enough for the first down. Bryson Jennings is going to bring him down his eighth tackle of the day, but that is good enough to move those chains now. Play action is going to go back to Aguilar. And he is sacked by C.J. Bazile Jr. And now they have a third and six. He's going to dump it down. Roberts breaks the first man's tackle. Lunging. Can't get the first down. Yes, 10 for 141 through the air. And can he get this fourth down conversion? Gutsy call here. Hamlet in motion. Roberts gets it. Blocking is there. And it's a touchdown. Never mind a fourth down conversion. As Kanan Hamlet... The lead blocker on the play ignores the hole, notices the offensive line is doing a good enough job blocking, and he just goes forward, and he just parts the Red Seas for Kanye Roberts, and that may be a dagger there if the Liberty Flame cannot score in a couple of seconds on this one. Miles Farmer's going to bring him down in the backfield. They have second and 11 now. Salter is in the shotgun still. They play out of that a lot. Salter's going to throw it into coverage. It is caught, though. Impressive grab by the big tight end there. Now a third and manageable third and four for the Flame. Salter outside. Curl route is strong with Tyshawn Mobley. And he has got a first down conversion again as we are nearing three minutes here in this fourth quarter. Down by 10. Liberty trying to get a comeback going on. Salter evades the rush. All kinds of space behind him, and he's got a first down inside the 25 as they have an impressive run there from Caden Salter. He evades the sack, gets open, and now he's going to throw a laser for six yards there, and he's going to set up a third and four. Salter with Lucas lined up directly behind him. He's going to fake it under pressure, fumbles the ball. He is not able to get anything going on that one they do recover unfortunately but they're gonna go for it i mean they could kick a field goal here but i guess they're saying they're gonna have to score a touchdown eventually maybe not on fourth and 16 though salter to the air open man oh touchdown tyshawn mobley his second of the day what a throw by caden salter and wow on a rope and he gives the flame a chance they have all three timeouts. They're going to be using them here after this two-minute warning. But a first down can effectively end this game if you get one. But Kanye Roberts 
Nowhere on first down, nowhere on second down, and now they have a third and 11. This is big. Aguilar throws it into coverage, caught by Robinson, and he's got a first down. And the Liberty Flame are forced to use their second timeout of the half, so this one can pretty much effectively be milked down if they wanted to. Now second and 10, Kanye Roberts sealing the deal. First and 10 at the 34. They have a second and three now inside Liberty Territory. It's going to be a run again. It's going to be to Roberts again. And another first down on the ground. And they can kneel it down. Big win here in year one for Julius Canary as they are able to take down one of the better group of five teams. I know group of five doesn't technically exist anymore. But Liberty has been consistently one of those better teams. They're a very strong opponent. And man, they've got a very talented quarterback, Caden Sauter. And don't get me wrong, he played really well this year or this game for them. But the defense came through when they needed him the most. Um, you know, the offense turns it over, that one pick by Joey Aguilar. And then the defense comes right back with a pick six on the very next play. Um, the defense has really done a great job of, hey, you make a mistake, we're going to have your back. So the offense has a lot of opportunities. Kanye Roberts, good on the ground as well, 20 for 76. Mikel Haywood, average eight yards per carry, so maybe he should have got a few more carries. But we just needed Roberts in there for the passing game. I mean, look at that, 10 catches, 140 yards. Um, somehow didn't score a touchdown. Christian Horn got involved today, 4 for 44. He is, I mean, technically overall-wise, are tied for best receiver on the roster. Um, so, or second best receiver, I should say. So, he should be getting involved more than he is. Dalton Stroman and a couple guys had one catch. Uh, Michael Hetzel and Kanan Hamlet both had one catch under five yards and a touchdown. So, pretty impressive. Uh, Miles Farmer led the team in solo tackles. Total would go to Jordan Favors. As always, our safeties are our best. Um, a couple guys with two tackles for losses. A couple sacks around the board. Seth Robertson, maybe a bigger interception than that pick six. I mean, it's tough to say because the pick six really... We lost momentum and that gave us a lot of it back. But that second interception might have, you know, is what gave us a two-score lead. And if we didn't have that, it would have been a tie ball game. So, you know... Maybe that was the bigger pick. Um, you know, either one of them is big at the end of the day. Overall, though, Liberty had a pretty good offensive game. You know, Caden Salter, despite the two turnovers, he had over 300 yards through the air. Um, Receiving-wise, they had two guys over 100 yards. Tyson, Mo Tyson Mobley had two touchdowns, 132 yards. He averaged 18 per catch. And then um, Julian Gray had 34 yards per catch. I mean, that's very impressive in my opinion. Um, so... Yeah, despite the loss, they're a really talented team. I think they've got a promising season ahead of them, but I'm happy we won. I'm happy Julius Canary's been able to start out strong, and just because of that win, we were able to get our first two commits of the series, Tony Lenovo and Roger Jusek, two two-star offensive linemen, so nothing crazy, but we need the depth, and unfortunately, we also saw that Mike Kidsey ends up at South Carolina. We expected that. And Stephen Coffey ends up with Troy, which I kind of expected as well. Um, pretty unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. Those guys are, you know, getting opportunities elsewhere. And, and you know, we're going to have to play the transfer portal strong once we get to the end of this season. This recruiting class we have is going to take some time to develop them. We need a quarterback next season, and I don't necessarily see any of the guys on the roster making a massive leap, especially if they're just sitting on the bench. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe one of them has a star development gene, but I'm not seeing it. So we don't have one on our board right now because Stephen Coffey was the only guy we were going after. We're really going to have to focus on depth. We're going to have to focus on everyone that's on our board very heavy, heavily. And then after that, we are going to, you know, once we get into the offseason, have to look at the quarterback options in the transfer portal because... We're going to need that a, a good quarterback to come in and play. Um, right now, I just went through, scheduled some visits for some guys that weren't quite ready a few weeks ago. Cam Vigil, we have a bunch of offensive linemen ready to go. I need depth there. Um, right now, if we have an injury at the offensive line, we're going to be starting like a 65 overall. And yeah, these guys that I'm recruiting may be around there, but they're going to be backups again. We're going to have our starters, a few coming back next year, and then we'll also have our backups who will get better from this year coming back next year as well. So it's kind of a process, you know, 
you bring these guys in yeah some of them are two stars some of them are three stars um maybe even a three star bust and you bring them in and you bring you hope to develop them to the point where you know maybe sophomore or junior year they can actually play some snaps maybe junior year they start that's really the main goal and we want to keep them around long enough for them to do that so um i think with local guys that's probably a, a good idea that's something that's very possible but unfortunately we just don't have the you know major talent really interested in coming to play for us i think it's going to be tough to convince a bunch of guys to play at app state but if we can continue to win if we can take this three and two record and, and you know maybe finish seven and five eight and four on the year which is going to be very tough but very doable that would be a very impressive first season for head coach julius canary and you know it's only going to be a, get more difficult next year but next week let's focus on that um we're facing off against a former nfl quarterback son cole pennington the starting quarterback at an 83 overall for the marshall thundering herd but do not underestimate Ryland Braxton, I don't know why I had it said 83 overall, 78 overall for Cole Pennington. He has not had a good year. Eight touchdowns, eight picks. He only completes about 65% of his passes. Ryland Braxton is one overall less, and he's a bit of more of a scrambling quarterback in. Uh, Marshall, not had a good year so far. They haven't had a good offensive unit. Ethan Payne, only 3.9 yards per carry for your starting running back. Probably not the best sign. Um, I mean, they do have four guys over double digits. Uh, receptions and two guys over 250 yards through the air and two guys with three touchdowns so passing game i guess you could say is you know talented they have some talent there they've got some you know good receivers braylon brown is there uh tyshawn chapman is there um, so it's not like they're void of talent they've got good receivers um, they just don't really have that quarterback that they want just yet and cole pennington has been pretty disappointing for them uh, but their defense plays pretty well, I will say. Unfortunately for them, they just haven't been able to win a game, many games this year. Uh, but they do sack. They get sacks. They get tackles for losses. Um, so you can't go into this game overlooking the opponent. And, you know, you say that about every opponent. But Marshall it would be one pretty easy. That would be pretty easy to overlook. So that is something I'm, I'm emphasizing here as we go into this week. Um, we've got to focus on this team that we're at that's at hand right now and we can't just overlook them um, because you know despite the record they do have talent and that can be seen um, with a game like south alabama granted south alabama had a good record if you know what i mean but same thing with marshall pretty much they um didn't really have the um success they've wanted so far at one and three but they can definitely still do it and yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how this game turns out i think it should be a blowout if possible but that's for next episode as always if you did enjoy this one make sure to hit the like button subscribe turn on post notifications if you don't have them on so you stay up to date with every upload in this series i thank you all for watching this one i'll catch you all next time have a great day